What's up, you guys? This is Abigail. You're listening to Mini Pixie Weirdo. Um, this is a mini pixie, so uh, it didn't. So this is with Adam Nutter, uh, from the Cult of Us podcast. Um, scheduling stuff sort of like got in the way, so it's a it's going to be a mini pixie. Um, and it's kind of a bridge episode between scams and comedy. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. This is a mini pixie, a bridge episode, so we kind of. It's very manic. We're all kind of all over the place. Um, but we'll have him on for a longer episode uh, coming soon. So stay tuned and check that out. Bye. Thanks. Hope you enjoy. Recording. Good to go. Okay, perfect. Um, I guess we can just jump right in. Uh, you're listening to the Manic Pixie Weirdo. I'm Abigail, your host, and this is the re- uh, relationship podcast where we talk about all the different kinds of relationships that you can have in your life. Um, and this week we are talking to Adam Nubber, Nutter, sorry, my <laughs> bad, good. Um, from the Cult of Us podcast. He is a comic, um, and we're talking about scams. Um, yeah. So. I guess go ahead and tell us about you. Like, have you been scammed? I've a hundred percent been scammed, but I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I was. Uh, I mean, yeah. Who who hasn't been scammed, right? I mean, we'd be lying if we'd be like, I'm, I'm perp. No, we've all been scammed, but like, I don't know. I guess the level of a scam. I I wouldn't say I've been like. I wasn't like in a in a Ponzi scheme. I wasn't like in a Madoff situation or, ever, right, or anything like that. Right. But I'm sure we've all been scammed. You know. But even friends and family who are like, I need like a thousand bucks, need a hundred bucks, need five, you know, like that shit. But um, the the whole scam thing, like that fascinates me with the whole, just the whole idea of it is how people get like how people get away with it, or not even get away with it, but how they go about trying to pull it. Like that's what fascinates me is like the the heist part of it, essentially. You know? Oh yeah. Well, see, and I kind of got into, like, learning about scams because I read... Hold on. I should have been... I feel really unprepared. Just a second. So, I read this book, and for those of you listening, it's called The Sting Man Inside Ab Scam by Robert W. Green. Um, And it was... So, that movie, American Hustle was kind of i don't even know if you could say it's supposed to be like based on real life or whatever right i wouldn't even say it's based on real life i would say it's like very loosely inspired by (laughs) Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. but this book like go read this book i got this book for 7.99 at half price books but it is the most insane thing you've ever read it reads like fiction and basically it's this guy who, here, I'll just read you the back of it. In February 1990, the, Nash, uh, the nation learned that the FBI had been conducting a sophisticated sting operation called Abscam in an effort to combat white-collar crimes such as art theft, securities fraud, and counterfeiting. Led by Mel Weinberg, international con man par excellence, the investigation soon revealed that there was a bigger game afoot. Like, he... Mm. It, it got... Uh, several members of the House of Representatives, a U.S. senator, and a gaggle of state and city officials, and a small army of lawyers and influence brokers who specialized in government, uh, like Whoa. favors. Like it caught those people. But they basically what they did was they got that guy Mel Weinberg because right. he was a famous con man. Like he, that's what he did for a living, and he got caught once he'd been doing it for like eight, like 30 something years or something crazy like that. And they caught him once. And then they were like, it was the classic, Hey, if you help us out, then like mm. maybe we can make this go away or whatever. I don't respect those guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I read that book and that sort of started my journey down this, like, well, what's up with scams. And I, so then I read that book called the confidence game and it talks about more the psychological, like the psychology of it, about like how we've all probably been scammed, but like there's that part of us that's like, oh no, I'm smarter than this. Like I can, we, it's and, and that's, yeah, that's <laughs> what gets us into those situations is it's like, no, I'm smart enough to figure this out. And if so, like I can't be being scammed. And then it just like you dig yourself into a deeper hole. And so I just like, so I've read two books and like watched a bunch of YouTube videos. So now I'm an expert. So I know exactly. That's how it works. <laughs> um, 
but I just got like really interested in it. And I, so like one of the YouTube videos that I watched was from a guy called CoffeeZilla and he, that's like what he does. He just makes YouTube videos about uh, people that have been scammed and like potential scams and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, I've totally done, like, this is a great idea, but like, let's talk to other people. Like, let's get, <laughs> I'm, cause I want to know what's a comics take on this. Like, how do you make this funny? Cause this shit is sad and it sucks. <laughs> it is sad, but you gotta understand like, okay, well, first of all, I guess you gotta first get into like, what's funny and that's subjective. Right. So the second part of that is like, well, I don't think anything should be off limits to comedy. Right. Like, no, if you I agree. Make it funny. Totally then like, because here's the thing. And this, I'm just stealing what Patrice O'Neill used to say. But like he used to say, and it's very true, though, he'd say like it, unfunny jokes and funny jokes come from the same exact place. Right. It's the same exact spot. You're, you're trying to be funny. Like you're not no comic. I mean, OK, you might have like a random comic who's a psychopath up there. We're all crazy. But I mean, like a real psychopath comic who's like yeah, just spouting yeah. just crazy shit to be. Cra- but most comics, if you if they we say something and I'm, I'm going to say offensive, but that's just a word, for, you know, for the zeitgeist of 2021. If we if we see something deemed offensive in today's society, it's like, hey, we're just trying to make you laugh. Chill the yeah. fuck out. <laughs> like, you right. Know what I'm so, so if you take that, now the third part of that is like, well, what's funny about like a Ponzi scheme? A lot of things, if if you wanna, if you wanna get into the dark side of it, like you know, mm-hmm. the fact that you might have that guy who's like married with like four kids, and he's like, uh, and then you have the guy trying to sell him the Brooklyn Bridge, right? And he's like, don't worry, right. honey, I think this one, this time yeah. I'm gonna fucking get, turn it around, and, and then it's like, you know, and you it's like you're gonna be living under the bridge, you idiot, you know? It's right. like. Right. <laughs> well, the it's, other thing, too, is that, like, life is kind of a scam in general. Just life in and of itself, I think, is kind of a scam in general. So it sort of comes with the territory. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense. That That is true. Oh, can you hold on one second? I have to grab my dog from the other room. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Go, go, ahead. go for it. It's totally fine. <laughs> Bud, do you want this water or not? Do you want it to come down? What do you want? Come on. I think he does want to come down. <laughs> yeah. All right, bud. Come on. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so, oh, so the reason I was late, by the way, the whole reason I was late, I'm sorry, it was because we just got a new dog <laughs> on top. <gasps> yeah, kind? so uh, he's a little Jack Russell mix. Oh, I have a Jack Russell. Oh, dude, he's really cute. But we also have uh, our other 10 year old dachshund. So it's just oh. both of them. like not no actually they're super cool together but it's just trying to take care of, and one's three one's ten and then right. you know one's on a much slower level but the one just got neutered today and i feel terrible because we didn't want to do it but they forced us to because he's a rescue and that's like a law in pennsylvania um, where, yeah it, so where in pennsylvania if you don't mind me asking no, uh, yeah i live in newtown i live right I, I, so i'm from staten island new york right and okay I, I, and I, i've been married for five years and uh my wife's from pennsylvania so i moved out here when we, you know, got, oh, cool. uh, yeah. So, uh, I, she was from Newtown now I live in Newtown. It's like, it's like a half hour from Philly. Oh, okay. Cause my grandparents, I have family that live in, well, they used to live in Indiana, but now they live in state college. So. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm I don't, sorry. My, my I don't dog, know where that is. To go to the bathroom. I'm sorry. You mind if I take him out real quick? I'm so yes. sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It. I gotta take him out. I'm go sorry. It. Cause my wife's trying to work in the room. I feel terrible. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. It's chill. You're fine. <laughs> It's okay. So I guess I'm going to do what comics call riffing. And um, that basically means I'm just going to sit here and talk while he's not here. Uh, (laughs) Or while he's doing something. Um, So Scam, so I kind of want to get his, like, I really want to get Adam's take on how you make this stuff funny. Like, how do you make Scams funny? Um... I think it'd be interesting. I have a lot of respect in general for comedians, um, mainly because I I just automatically have a lot of respect for people who do things I can't do um, for that simple fact. I can't do it. And especially to do something well. Um, and comedy is, I think it's very, very, very hard. Uh, it is, in my opinion, one of the hardest things uh, for someone to do because, like he said, comedy is so different. So, like, what is funny? Um, 
it's and so what is funny like what what is that to and it's different because it's different for everybody it's really difficult to be funny for a lot of people um I can make myself crack up all day I there's not a lot to it though uh because I have a I don't even think I have a specific type of like brand of comedy I kind of know what I don't like in comedy um but other than that, I kind of like that's kind of how I approach everything, though, is I kind of know what I don't like. And then I'm just kind of like, well, everything else is it is like it's fine. Um, oh, hold on. What's this? Oh, OK, whatever. So. um, But that's just. I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel about comedy. It's just very hard. It's very difficult to be funny to a lot of people, to a large group of people. Excuse me. Um, it's really hard to be funny. I don't know. Is this even recording? I'm going to be really upset if this isn't recording. Uh, hold on, guys. Let's see. Stop recording. No, it's Stop recording, take a snapshot, turn on subtitles, choose background effect, turn off incoming video. No, I think it's fine. It just doesn't, like, the numbers aren't moving. Okay. Well, well, because it just says zero dot dot zero zero. Stop recording. Usually it'll tell, give me, like, a time up there. So, I don't know. I guess I picked I guess I picked scams for us to talk about because it is really interesting. It is. It's very uh, to me, to me. And it seems like to Adam it is too. Um, just the idea of scams. And I and he was like, if you want a comics take, like come on this podcast. And I was like, absolutely. Like, let's talk about that. How do you make this funny? Because it is very and I think that's that's sort of the fascinating thing to me from like a just like a personal perspective. Um, is how do you take something like a scam that hurts a lot of people? You know, that's, it's very, it's a very real thing. It's a thing that happens all the time. Um, and it's just preying on everybody. Basically scam artists are, you know, successful ones, like ones that are good at it. Uh, they're preying, they're preying on the vulnerability and the confidence in, you know, other people, um, uh, which I assume is why it's called, why she called, uh, that woman called that her book the confidence game um anyway but so i just like to know i like i want his take on what's how do you do that because it is like when i was reading this book the sting man it was like i was laughing reading it it was hilarious because it was just so unbelievable it truly was it was just so unbelievable like and there's another one. There's another guy who did that. I forget what his name is. Hold on, let me check. Um, oh, Adam's back. I can stop talking. Uh, talk so sorry. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> fine. I was just, I, I believe it's called riffing. I don't know, but I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> So um, sorry. Oh my God! It had a total. Yeah, that was a whole ordeal. <laughs> you're fine. It's fine. This is a podcast where we don't give a fuck. Um, no, I was just saying. Like, first of all, I have a lot of uh, respect for comedians because it, oh, number one, I'm not funny, and I can't be funny, and I don't. That's not. No, I didn't come with that part. Um, but also, comedy is really hard. Like, I, I, I've always wanted to be sort of in like the entertainment industry in some capacity, but I never, I tried comedy like when high school, like once and it did not go well, but, <laughs> yeah, but you're a high school kid at the time. You, what, what do you know? Like, you know, nothing of life, you know, nothing of jokes. You know, it's, it's like, it's like, you're just trying, yeah, you, it, there's, it's not a fair like judgment of like your adult abilities but, to try comedy. <laughs> right. But what I, but what I realized was that it is, probably the hardest form of an art form like as a physical art form that a person could do because one um 
it's hard to be funny to everybody. Like you said, what is comedy, you know? Right. And it's really hard to be funny to like a large group of people. It's really hard to find something that like, you know, everybody can find funny. Um, Here's something that maybe you, okay. For a non-comic, uh, sometimes though, if there's more people, the better chance you're casting a wider net for something to be relatable, as opposed to, let's say you have a room of 10 people, well, that's true. If nothing lands for those ten, if no references land for those ten people, it's just silent. But let's say you have a room of a hundred people. If those ten people don't get your references, but the other ninety people do, who gives a shit? <laughs> right. <laughs> about those 10 right. People? Well, that's fair. That's fair. right. I guess I so don't. I'm, so, I'm much you know. more of a. Yeah, I guess I'm. I tend towards the pessimism side. I don't know. <laughs> no, I um, do too. But you know. <laughs> I, well, I, I but again, yeah, I think that's just an artistic person it is. in general. We're all, yeah, we're all just negative. Not, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but I want to get like a comics perspective on like how to make this funny. Like how do you because I think that's sort of a hot button issue right now is I feel like comics, a lot of comics are in sort of hot water about like what can we like what are the areas that we can tread into and what are the areas that we can't. Right. And I totally see if like you wrote a joke about scams purely to be funny. How some people would be like, that's like my grandmother got scammed. Well, so no, that's, scammed. that's what would happen. You know? You'd be like, oh, oh I got my, my so and so was from Bernie Madoff. It's like, okay, dude, I right. don't know. It's like, yeah. but you can't please everybody. Like, I don't know. Most of my comedy, though, is like, I don't. Well, that's the other thing. Like, what kind of comedy do you do? I kind of know what I don't like in comedy, and then everything else is just kind of like, okay, cool. But so I, I have like, like a. Oh, you prop comic? Like, no, not at all. <laughs> um, so I have a pinned video on my Twitter right now that it's from like a, I think last summer or yeah, last summer. Um, it's a bit I have about just like seeing my therapist and like. Oh, I saw that. Dark, it was yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> Thank you. So it's like a, it's it's just like a dark joke, but it's about me. I'm not like shitting on anybody. I'm just right. talking. I'm yeah. Most of it, I'm either shitting on myself or I'm making just observations to them what I think personally are dumb or wild or crazy or right. interesting to me, but like, I'm not talking about politics. Like, you know, I have one joke where I reference my politics, but it makes it, ha- I have to kind of enhances the joke more. It, it, oh, it builds okay. a little more of a bad no, story, yeah. <laughs> but like, but like, it, it, but I, like, I'm a libertarian, so no one really gives a shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so people, so people are I, like, whatever. Um, it's like, yeah. You know, so, so it's like it's not even that. This, it's not even decisive when I say that. I just say that because right. I go, I'm a libertarian, and I hate the I hate the government. That's and that's the setup to the rest of the joke. But that's all, the only reason I say that is before, it's. But everything else is like very much Listen. like no, nah, this is. I do this when I like this drugs, whatever. I used to drink, whatever. Yeah. Like this, really, I'm married, stuff, whatever. You know, like but it's just stuff like that. I'm not doing anything fucking crazy like, we're you know oh okay well i don't know i mean i don't like i said i kind of know what i don't like in comedy and what then i like? and then well okay i'm not a comedy like movie person i don't do comedy movies a lot i guess i'm sort of like realizing again that it's a little bit more complicated than that because well, that's not stand up though that's totally different i love stand up I love stand up. I have just like a whole thing saved on my Netflix of just like stand up and YouTube and you know all that. I love stand up. I don't I think the only comedy movie that I ever saw that I liked um like recently was The Internship with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson. I liked that one. And that's not even recent. And the other and then and then the other recent comedy movie that I liked is guess who's coming together or guess who's coming to dinner with Spencer Tracy and <laughs> like those even, are my two comedy films. That I, I don't like. even that's so dude that's so random. I mean those are, I mean I could I could Anchorman. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like that kind of comedy. I don't it's, like Will Ferrell's kind of comedy. I also don't really I like Jim Carrey more now that I'm older. Yeah, Ace Ventura, Jesus Christ. I, I like him more than I'm now that I'm older. Um, but I don't like I I just don't like Will Smith. I don't I also don't like Adam Sandler. I just don't find that stuff funny. Like it's just not funny to me. So that's fair because I actually had a debate with a few other people uh, a few weeks ago about um Adam Sandler and Jim Carrey, and I was like Jim Carrey's a definitely better actor. I would for say sure. too, yeah. And more, and he has better movies for sure. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh as a whole. yeah. I agree well, with you. Okay, I guess that's true. I liked Iron Man in the Truman Show. Or um Liar Liar. <laughs> liar Liar. I can't think. Um Liar Liar and the Truman Show. I liked both of those. Well and the yeah, Truman Show was good. But <laughs> I mean. But yeah, those are so I just like I said, I kind of know what I don't like. So I don't like Adam Sandler's kind of humor. Um, I don't like Will Ferrell's kind of humor. Um, but then everything else is pretty much like open. For... How about like forty year old version or like those movies? I've never seen them because I don't like. I well, I'm jaded. I'm jaded because I don't like comedy movies. So it's like instantly when I see that it's a comedy movie, I'm like, I'm not going to see that. Seen, I'm not okay, watching you're, that. You ever see Superbad? No. Oh, listen, I've seen okay. like I've seen like clips of it, you know, like because it's one of those movies that'll be like on TV. So, so super okay, maybe Superbad <laughs> holds more to me because when it came out, I was like either in college or just graduating college. I was, I was like young and it hit very I much like, home. I think, I, I think, yeah, I think I was actually, I think I was in college. I think I was like a freshman in college or sophomore in college. So I think like, I was it, like eight it, years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm old. I'm 34. Uh, so, so 27 uh, be quiet. That's like tomorrow. It's not, you don't understand how big of a gap that is. It's so big. I'm telling you. Oh. It's big. I, I rem- yeah, I remember 20. Well, but I also say that, like, I'll, I have a sister who's, like, 13, and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, my God. Yeah. I would You couldn't pay me to go back to be 13, but it's just real, like, she's like, the sky is falling, and I'm like, it's not. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I prefer 34 over 27. Really? Okay. I So it gets better, guys. <laughs> well, no, it definitely doesn't, but <laughs> it definitely doesn't. It's harder if anything, but, but like, no, I just have more... Like, I was essentially a dumb person in my entire 20s. Oh, you know, well, like, I, I feel like we all are. Right. I, I still don't feel like an adult. Like, no, I'm, no, still I'm still like a this... dumb person, but I'm less dumb than I was in my 20s, and that's oh. worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. learning from all my stupid mistakes. Like, I still am dumb, but, like, I still screw up all the time, for sure. <laughs> but, oh. but, like, uh, yeah, it's just I'd rather have the knowledge now of the, my past mm-hmm. mistakes than, you know, Oh yeah, that stupid question of like if you could go back and redo it, like would you? And I'm, my answer is always no. Oh, I no. would. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you would. What would you redo? Uh, certain decisions and stuff. Like I would, <laughs> I would do comedy. I would stick with comedy earlier. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like when that. did you like find that? When did you find that comedy was like your thing? So, I always loved comedy. Like I was always a stand up fan like when i was a kid you know and then i, w- I would listen to, like opening anthony in the morning back in, you know come from new york and stuff like that and and uh, like those comics i always loved like jim norton patrice o'neill bobby Kelly, those guys and uh at 18 you know i'm from Staten island so manhattan's right across the goddamn river right right so uh i was like oh shit i could do stand-up now i'm 18 i was like i could try it yeah and i went to the comic strip which was an awful it's like a it's like a failing comedy club essentially now oh but uh yeah it's it's been for years i was like it's like where jerry seinfeld started but it was like big in the 70s and oh, 80s, right? okay, but, in the 90s. It... but uh i did my very first open mic there and uh i was like oh i love this i think and then you know like i fell in love with it what did you did fall it... in love with like what was it specifically that, fe- that you fell in love with with comedy like when you performed like what was it or just you... like the joke just the joke telling the, the the grappling with the audience like trying to figure out like what makes them laugh like even just trying oh, to figure out what makes, you know like that's the whole thing right. like, it's like a puzzle it was like chess oh yeah and cool. then it's also working on like your routine and like building and act and, you know right 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 but you like that whole that just that whole structure of it like all of it cool yeah cool. okay that's what you felt like that. i always awesome. yeah and also just making people laugh is that's the number one that's right. a great feeling but uh, yeah, it's like yeah, it was always I feel like the chest thing a little bit too. It's like it's like you know, it, it's a high. It is it's a high too. It's like oh yeah, yeah for sure. It's it's a lot of things. Yeah. No, I guess um, like sort of side. I digress. Um, like I sort of have this life philosophy, and it's like I have a very very sick twisted sense of humor. I just know that about myself. Um, and basically that comes from, I'm either going to laugh or I'm going to cry. And I would much rather laugh 
Um, because if I cry, I don't know if I'm going to stop. So I would just rather laugh and make everything a joke. Um, is that kind of the experience that you get as a comic or like, is that sort of a common thread or is that I'm, not at all true? Everyone's <laughs> different. Right. So like for me personally, I always just like to, uh, make every sad part of you can't okay something sad happens or negative you can't change it right. that's right it's, it's irreversible so it, it's mm-hmm. done it's 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 done well might as well try to find the funny in it yeah fair yeah. there's there's no point into not and i definitely am in the minority in that because i know most people around me they disagree and they're like we we like that's not funny i'm like well it is, like, <laughs> you know, but it is yeah. funny. Like, it doesn't make it just because something's tragic doesn't make it not funny, right? Like right. it's just how it is. Like that's this. Yeah. Sorry. Like I'm sorry. Double standards exist. Like I don't yeah, know what to tell it, you. There's but, like, nothing I can do. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Um, have you ever talked about like scams or anything in your? No, I never talked about scams or anything like that. Uh, no, because I, I mean, just, well, I also specific. It's a very specific. Yeah. I would have to have like a story of like, you know, a, a very specific story that happening to me mm. or like someone in my family or like, or again, maybe when the Madoff thing was big and I was like, doing oh, yeah. comedy, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, sh- maybe. Yeah. but just to be like a bit about scams, like I'm not that type of comic. I know there are comics right. totally, but like, I could be like, yo, scams. You'd be like, give me a, give me a day. <laughs> and I'll come oh, back wow. with a fucking, cool. you know, 20 jokes about scams. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> that's oh not my thing. That's not. I can't. I can't write like that. I can't work. You know. So I just again. I I base my stuff off of observations. What happens to me personally? Right. But a lot of guys could just be like, oh yeah, get a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, yeah. I'll write twenty jokes about a vacuum cleaner. I feel like that would be a good like comedy writing exercise. Oh, I guess they are. Like, pick yeah. random ex like random objects around your house yeah, and write jokes about it. But I. I feel like I would just get very bored really quickly. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not because like, I don't have that focus. I don't have the focus to be able to just sit there and go, okay, there's a Kleenex box. Come up with 15 things that are hilarious about a Kleenex box. I don't know. <laughs> like a, a lot of uh, really famous headlining comics will be like, you sit down and write every day, and they're not wrong, but it's like, but that doesn't work for everybody, right? So like, I can't sit down and be like, okay, today I'm just gonna write. Like now, what I can do, and I do this a lot, is I'll have a premise in my head already, mm. and I'll be like, "Oh, I'm gonna try to sit down and write this shit out today." Oh, okay. Cool. But I can't just go to like a diner and be like, "Okay, I'm gonna fucking just yeah. write jokes." I can't. Right. Do it. I have to go there with a purpose. You know what right. I'm saying? Like I'm already like, okay, I have this. A uh, joke about the dump, Staten Island dump. Okay, now I have it kind of worked out. Now let me go down and write it. Now right. I'll take like an hour or two or three or whatever to try to rewrite it, reword it, reduce it like that. But some guys can just be like, I'm going to like my uh, my my my, uh, my friend who I do my podcast with, uh, called of us, uh, Neil Wood. He's a great comic too. But like check he could out. just he could just yeah, check us out. He he could just write. Oh, jealous. And I'm like, all right, man. Good for you. <laughs> like, I, I, not I, really, I guess. yeah, I don't think I could do that. I can't. Well, I, I, I know I couldn't do that. Just like sit down and just like force myself because it would feel like a like it would that sort of to me I guess would take like that would just be very soul sucking for me. I don't know if that would it would it would feel more like a job like I have to do this instead well, of it, no no I want to do well, this. You no, know it is. It's like if you don't. Here's the problem with comedy too. Is like if you don't treat it like a job. Oh no. No no no. Like you'll fuck yourself like you I, but like there's a lot of times where i'm like what am i even doing like this isn't real you know and I'm like i'm like no i have to be serious like i have to i have to tell you like you know come on. this is like i make money this way like, 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 oh i love that yeah like, it's, 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 it's sometimes like because like, like sometimes like we'll be on like before covid like you're on the road with like your friend or two you know doing shows and like the three of you in our hotel room and you're talking about like you know, like what dog is more attractive, and not in a sexual way, just like in a fucking like, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. and and then you'd yeah. be like, hey guys, stop right now. What other job in the planet, right? Would three of <laughs> us be getting away with doing this? And it's like that's just this is just a day in the life. Like we're right. lucky in that no, sense. But it's like you know yeah. what I'm saying. But it's also like 
like it's also like you you, sh- you shouldn't respect us because that's that's also what we do. Like you definitely shouldn't respect. Like you definitely shouldn't respect. <laughs> I always say this too. Like, like in, the, in the entertainment world, it's, it's, I, I, I sometimes I say this on stage. I'm like, um, I'm like, you guys have to understand. Like comics, we are the least respected of all entertainers. It goes like this. It goes number one and two flips them back and forth or actors and musicians right yeah then okay. it's then it's everything else right clowns mimes and then fucking comedians it's like Jesus. everyone gets more respect because everyone thinks they could do our everyone thinks they could do what we do but no one looks at a musician and goes i could do that well actually a lot of people do but they never do see that's a, well i've seen that though i i think that's a part of i don't know what that is actually i want to explore that what is that? Because there are, I have met people like that that are like, oh, I could do that. And and then my response is always, well, then do it. I think- because that's what people need. Like, if if you think that it's that easy, you do it. Because that'll give you some sort of, like, you know, understanding of, like, no, no, this isn't just as easy as you think. It's not, it doesn't work that way. This is hard. I, I could only speak, I guess, on comedy. I, I, because I, this is my only, I guess, it's just my bro science opinion. Is I think it's because, uh, I think it's because, uh, like, everyone makes their someone in their life laugh at some point, or everyone, you know um, what I'm saying. So you have somebody in your life that for sure you crush with, like you like everything I say that person, right? Like, or you're the funny guy at the office, or whatever the fuck it is. But that's not the same. So, but people think it is. So, but people think it is. So they'll be like, "Oh, I could make people laugh." It's like, okay, good luck. Yeah. No, I get that. I see, and and like I've said that before. Like it's re- it's different because my podcast is just me, and then I just like interview people and talk and stuff like that. Um, but <laughs> it's different when it's just like me. I can make myself laugh, but that's very different than walking out on a stage even like a small stage full of like 50 people and making 50 people laugh that's very yeah. different <laughs> it's so different people and people don't get it. and like some people by the way like will go to open mic and like be like i'm the office funny guy and do it and, the, and they're like oh they're actually pretty good at this but like most guys like don't aren't i'm saying guys because this is usually like that's the type of usually that's the type of usually women don't have that attitude with that shit, oops, sorry, <gasps> gate fell. That was just the gate. Um, oh, like no. usually, women don't have uh, that attitude. With like the um, oh, I could make you, I could do that too. That's a very guy attitude. Oh, really? Yeah, for sure. I, I think, guess I, I never noticed so. that. I guess yeah, I never because, noticed uh, that. I'm also a, I'm also a, besides me being a nerdy comic dude, I'm also a, pro, a former jock. I played football for a long time, did mixed martial uh-huh. arts, and everyone you're around who does like football, I'm so much MMA, but football a lot of that's like i could fucking do that i could i could throw the ball through there it's like it's a bro got frat guy mentality even frat guy. it's like kind of like a dude mentality like it's like i it's like an alpha shit and i get it because I, I i do that too oh okay so, i was yeah, wondering so, yeah. that that okay that makes sense yeah i see that because i was yeah. like i don't um i'm gonna get canceled for this but nah, I um <laughs> i like i just don't i don't really see that from a lot of like theater nerds <laughs> so, okay so interesting fact i have a I have a good i don't want to i don't want to throw one of the bus because he he kind of does a podcast in that world he's i'm gonna see that people will know who i'm talking about anyway Fuck i am her. a so, proud theater nerd no, no so, so my my, my buddy he's a he's a comic but he's he's also like a theater like he went to college for theater but he's not a theater kid like he's a jock comic dude <gasps> but he went to because he also likes to act he can sing he also oh. likes to act and stuff but he would tell. He tells me all the time. He's like, "Yo, those theater kids are fucking cutthroat." Well, we he's are. like, they're fucking well, vicious. It's, it's very like so. Okay, so like the theater g- world is much more like Mean Girls. Right. So if you were to do it, it would be like theater kids and like choir freaks, like all of us. We're very like Slytherin, Mean Girls, cutthroat. Like it is bitchy as fuck. Um, whereas like jocks, y'all will just, you'll just settle it right now. Like, let's just figure this out and then we're done. And then it's over. Like whoever won, won. And then it's fucked. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. It's, it's weird. How, like every form of entertainment has a dumb, its own clicks and dumb shit. It's so like everything is so re- yeah, I'm also have... sorry to cut you off, but I also kind of have to wrap it up soon because I got to help with the dog. He's losing her goddamn mind. Oh yeah, here. absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, fine. No, that's fine. That's really cool. We can wrap it up. Um, I will have to get you guys back on the podcast, though. 
Yeah, uh, no, for sure. I'm just, usually this is I'm really feel bad because usually I'm very like I could talk for hours and like, usually, but this is like the worst. And like it was my fault. I totally didn't realize it was today that we were getting this dog. Uh, and then when you texted me this morning, I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's today, isn't it? <laughs> it's totally cool. It's completely fine. Um, well, then I guess we can just sort of like wrap it up here um, and I will get you guys back on. No, it no, just it sure. gives you I an would, excuse to come back. No, I would it. definitely love to. And I promise <laughs> next time you'll have me for as many hours as you want, uninterrupted by dogs. I'll go down to the studio so you, I can't even be here. <laughs> so I'll I totally get it. The situation. I'll just go to the studio and record the podcast. Don't worry. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's totally fine. I'll I will hold you to the rain check though, because you are pretty. No, funny. I I promise you. I, listen, I'm a comic. I have nothing going on. I Fair will point. do it. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, don't don't worry. We'll, we'll, well do it I'm a voice world. actor, so I have nothing going on either. Boom, you get it. We'll <laughs> yeah, nothing going on collectively. It's fine. We'll that we'll exactly. do it in a week or two. We'll sure. do nothing together. Yeah, be um, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Adam Nutter, for coming on uh, from the Cult of Us podcast. Go check it out. Uh, go ahead and drop all your stuff, and then if you could text it to me or something like over Twitter, so I can yeah, put no, it in the sure. description. Just, uh, just at Adam Nutter on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Adam Nutter Comedy on Facebook and TikTok. Yeah, I, I'm on TikTok, I know. And then um, Cult of Us, uh, that's available. My podcast, that's my main podcast, is available everywhere on YouTube, youtube.com slash Cult of Us. Uh, if you guys want to help us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Cult of Us, a dollar gets you access to all the extra stuff. I also do uh, a sports podcast, Slap Six Sports, and uh, uh, my other podcast I do is Garbage Opinions Podcast. I do with a few other podcasters, and we just kind of riff about garbage opinions that we have that's pretty much it but check those all out they're available everywhere follow me and all that good stuff (laughs) okay thank you so much thank you so much we'll definitely do it again okay have a good one bye thank you bye thank you guys so much for listening i hope you guys enjoyed it i had a lot of fun with him um like i said this is kind of a bridge episode between comedy and scams uh so it's a mini pixie it's very manic i'm really sorry about that um but it's cool it's gonna be fine he's gonna come back and we're gonna talk to him more about all these things comedy scams relationships with all of those things um i just kind of wanted to put it out there uh give you kind of a taste of where the those longer episodes are going to come from um so that's why this is a mini bridge pixie episode uh as always thank you so much for listening i hope you guys liked it if you did please like and subscribe if you're listening on youtube um, it helps the channel a lot. And if you could rate and review us on iTunes, the podcast, uh, on iTunes podcast or Apple podcast or whatever it is, um, that really, really helps us a lot. I do feel kind of gross still asking you guys to do this, but it really does help a lot. Um, so thank you so much for listening. If you want to email us, if you want to email me, us, I keep saying us, it's not a thing. <clears throat> it's just me. Um, you can do that at manicpixieweirdo uh, at protonmail.com. Um, so tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, if you could relate to it, if you have a story, if you have a topic that you want to cover, if you want that you want me to cover, um, absolutely go ahead, shoot me an email at manicpixieweirdo at protonmail.com. Uh, follow us on all the things, Twitter at mpweirdopodcast. Instagram is uh, the underscore main underscore weirdo one. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all the things. Like I said, I'm still working on the Patreon, getting that up. Uh, or not the Patreon, excuse me. We're not there yet. We're not doing that yet. No, no, no. Uh, the uh, Pinterest. So sorry about that. Um, I will keep you guys updated and stay tuned for that. So hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for listening. As always, be kind and stay weird. Love y'all. Bye.